Today, we're excited to release Invoke 5.3, which includes our Select Object tool, a powerful new way to isolate objects within an image and turn them into layers. Whether you're fine-tuning specific elements or changing backgrounds, Select Object makes it faster and easier to get precise control over your images. To start using Select Object, make sure you've added a raster layer to your canvas by dragging the image from your gallery that you want to segment. Click on the Select Object tool, which opens the selection box below your image on the canvas. There are two types of points you can add, Include and Exclude. Pick Include to add points to the parts of the object you want to select. Pick Exclude to mark areas you don't want selected. Depending on your image, you may not need to add exclude points, but they're available for added precision. With Auto Process turned on, the model will automatically try to detect the object you're selecting as you add points. If you turn Auto Process off, you can place all your points manually and then click Process to have the model segment the object from the rest of the image. For best results, fewer points are usually better. Once you've set your points, you can also invert selection to choose everything outside the selected object, which is great for isolating a background. When you're ready, you can hit Apply to replace your raster layer with the current selection, or you can save your selection as a new layer, either a raster layer, regional guidance layer, control layer, or in-paint mask. Once saved, it's ready for editing with the full power of the control canvas. From here, you can manipulate, refine, or run image-to-image -image transformations on this isolated object. Now, I'm going to pass it over to Kent, who's going to walk through three examples of select object that he shared in a recent live session on our Discord channel. Over to you, Kent. Let's say, for example, I like this like thing here. So I'm going to take this uh, and select it. I'm going to save that as a new raster layer. And whoa, look at that. We got a new one over here. All right, so we're going to take that magic. Uh, we're going to transform it. And boom, I'm flipping it. Flipping it. Now we got another one over there. All right. And then what do I want to do? I want to I want to inpaint that. I want to fix it, right? OK, well, I'm going to copy that raster layer to an inpaint mask. Voila, it's already selected for me. But because the inpaint mask is there and because we do a little bit of blurring on the edges already, it is going to fix all of it. It's going to fix everything inside of that. So now I've got this other plant thing over here with this bench and it's just magic. It's already it's already done, right? Uh, we'll select our object. We'll go pop, 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 pop. Just exactly what I wanted. We'll take out our concept art-ish background. Now let's say that we want to put him, where do we want to put him? Let's put him on the beach. <laughs> so he said, welcome to Pinzoil Cola. It's funny. We'll do a little martini glass, draw in, you know, this is where I get, this is where I get the tablet out. Cool. We like that. You know, we've got a little sketch there of our uh, martini glass. It's good to have that kind of like big, big picture there. It's all good. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and my sketch, my sketch quality notwithstanding, uh, we do have our new martini. So. We've taken, we've taken our robot, we've taken him out to the beach. We've given him a martini glass. Uh, we're happy. You might think that this image is too hard for the segmentation model. Let's give it a test. We'll get some hands, we'll get some head, we'll get some body. And we'll get down here. Look at that. Pop, 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 pop. Save as in paint mask. Boom. Now, if we prompt for a steampunk looking robot standing on the beach holding a martini with this image, I imagine it's going to look terrible, but we're going to do it anyways, because that's what we do here. Look at that. We got something. We got something. I don't know that it's good, but we got something. It says, oh, is it higher denoise? Let's go. Let's see what we get if we go higher. It's going to be completely, it's going to be wild. There we go. There's our steampunk. You see a little bit of beach coming in down there. Look at that. Look at that. So funny. Okay. 
Okay. Whoa. Look at that. Invoke 5.3 adds support for Flux global reference images, expanding our layer options, which added control layer support in Invoke 5.2. To use a global reference image, start by going to the Generation tab and selecting a Flux model. From there, the easiest way to set up a global reference image layer is to drag an image onto your canvas and choose New Global Reference Image. Next, head to your Layers tab You'll select the Flux IP Adapter Model. If you don't see it in the list, you may need to add it in the Model Manager or reach out to your organization admin to have it included in your project. When you're happy with your settings, press Invoke to apply the effect. We can't wait to see what you create with Invoke 5.3. Join us in Discord to share what you create or if you need any support using the Select Object tool or Layers with Flux. Happy Invoking!